I'm married to Jennifer Osborne. Jennifer and I have an 18 month old baby named Adelaide. Jennifer is a psychologist at uh, Truman Mental Health Clinic in downtown Kansas City. I have a degree in finance from Syracuse University. I also hold the Chartered Financial Analyst designation. I started a business eight years ago managing people's money, stocks and bonds. I also write economic reports, financial reports. I've made uh, predictions on the stock market and the economy. Some of these predictions have come to fruition. Some of these predictions have been off the mark. Uh, I feel that I'm going to use these skills in Jefferson City to help write laws. I see a lot of laws come out of Jefferson City and Washington, D.C. with claims that it just aren't valid. You can look up my past recommendations on my company's website, HolmesOsborne.com. Uh, I also wanted to say that I heard that I'm listed in there as a Republican. I think that's just wishful thinking from Farm Bureau. <laughs> Thank you, Holmes. Glenn, you as well. Please tell us something about yourself, your reasons for running for office, and also your qualifications for it. Okay, thank you, Janet. Well, first of all, I want to thank the sponsors for this event here tonight. I also want to thank everyone for coming out tonight. Uh, you could be home watching the pre presidential debate versus this debate, so, but I want to thank you. I'm a lifelong resident here of Lafayette County, and uh, my wife, Lisa, 32 years, and my two children, Eric and Emily. I'm proud to have them, them here as well. I have four grandchildren, and uh, we're mighty proud of those. We run, the, the four of us, we run a family-owned business. And uh, it's, it's a business that my parents started in 1955. And uh, 2007 and 2008, we sold out. Uh, government regulations basically put us out of business. And, uh, but I'm not a victim. I'm not a victim. We're survivors. Uh, we uh, continued on the trucking end of that business, and today we operate uh, Energy Transport Solutions in Wellington. Uh, we haul gasoline, diesel, propane. Seventy-five percent of what we do is towards agriculture, has something to do. The other twenty-five percent is gasoline to the break times in the county. So uh, we're, we're very... Uh, active here in the community and, and things we do. I'm um, a retired fire chief at Wellington, Napoleon. I spent 20 years as chief, spent 29 years with an emergency medical technician's <coughs> license. I'm past president. It says I'm out of time. <laughs> The second question goes first to Glenn. Okay. We ask you to prioritize current issues that are facing Lafayette County and or the office that you seek and state how you would propose to deal with those issues. Okay. The economy and jobs has to be our top priority. We need to get people back to work. Government doesn't create jobs. Small business creates jobs creates those jobs. We need, as government, we need to create a climate in which we can help those small businesses create and grow their business and create those jobs. We need, government needs to get off, off the back of small business. As a small business owner, I know what it's like to tell employees to go home because we're shutting down a business because of government regulations. I was at a seminar this past week at, uh, in Kansas City and uh, heard from the uh, CEO, the retired CEO of Home Depot, and he said that in today's climate, in today's business climate, Home Depot could not happen. You know, it's not only on the state level, but it's on the national level that we have problems with, with all of the regulations. We need to get our people back to work. If we want to fund our HAB Center here in Higginsville, and we need to get those people raises, we need to get people back to work so they can pay taxes to, to help fund the HAB Center. I see a superintendent out here. You know, we have some very good schools. 
in this county. Very proud of our schools. I have to toot on uh, Wellington's horn. Wellington School is number eight in the state. I mean, isn't that awesome? We need to support those schools. And the only way we're going to do it is get people back to work so we can build and grow the tax base so we can get the superintendent the money he needs to educate our children and my grandchildren and your grandchildren. Thank you. Holmes, would you please prioritize the current issues that you feel are facing Lafayette County? Or, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> state representative facing the state and um, how you would deal with those issues. I have five issues for Lafayette County. The first one is to get a new on and off ramp for the city of Odessa off of I-70. Travelers coming down the interstate won't pull off in Odessa because they can't see where they get back onto the interstate. The second issue is to get Wentworth Community College A plus certified. Currently it does not qualify because it's a private school. The students and alumni should not have to shoulder the burden of the cost of training cadets who will be in our military someday. The third issue is to keep the Habilitation Center here in Higginsville fully funded. The state has been taking federal dollars and placing a lot of patients out in the community. Some of these people are very dangerous and they should be on grounds. They have extremely low paid employees. The city of Higginsville and Lafayette County, every time there's an emergency there and they get paid, guess who pays for it? They do. It's a state function. It's going on right now and eventually something bad's going to happen, you mark my word. Fourth issue is to elevate 23 highway south of Concordia. It floods. It ruins the road. There's no reason that this should be happening. It would probably take a lot of money, probably between 10 and 15 million dollars. I've spoken to MoDOT officials, but it could be done. It can be done and we've got to do it. Fifth issue is to clean up the mobile home parks in Bates City. The people there are living in squalor. I've worked with the Department of Natural Resources to make sure that they have clean drinking water and that they're going to fence in their lagoons. By the way, I own a small business that I started from scratch eight years ago, and it was tough work. I started from nothing. Not only do small businesses create jobs, schools create jobs, churches create jobs, big business creates jobs. We need all types of jobs out here in Lafayette County. It's not just about jobs, it's about adding value to society. How do you add value to society? The preacher who saves souls, how do you measure that? It's tough to measure, but anyone who adds value to society has a job. Okay, Holmes, look to uh, future opportunities or issues facing the state um, and propose how you would take advantage of or, or address them. We have three strengths here in Lafayette County. The one is our close proximity to Kansas City. If you go into Bates City in the daytime, there are more people working in Bates City than live in Bates City. There's a lot of businesses around there and they've come in from Kansas City. World Spice in Concordia, big employer, they've come in from Kansas City. That is a strength that we need to capitalize on. Second strength is Interstate 70. We need more gas stations and more retailing at these various exits. We lost the Outland Mall in Odessa that really hurt this area. Those gas stations and retailing will bring in sales tax and property tax. That money will be used for better roads, better schools, increases in pay for our deputy sheriffs who are grossly underpaid. That is a strength through here that we need to capitalize upon. Third issue is agriculture. Agriculture is our manufacturing. We've got meat packing plants in Concordia. Tyson chicken, okay, they, they package hams there. You wouldn't believe this, but a lot of people don't know this, but Jack Stacks processes meat in Alma, and they take that processed meat to the caves in Kansas City, and they sell that meat all over the world by mail order. There's another strength, so how do we capitalize on it? We make sure that businesses like that don't go to Clay County, they don't go to Cass County, they go to Lafayette County. Yourself. Look to the future opportunities or issues facing the state and your office and propose how you would take advantage and address those. Well, I agree with Mr. Osborne that I-70 is one of our biggest assets. One of the things we need to do is, is make sure that no tolls get put on I-70. Tolls would shut down exits. 
would shut down. We, uh, we don't have the out, outlying highway system to support the people that are not going to get on I-70, or if it was told. So that's A number one, we need to keep I-70 a freeway. And uh, I-70 is 50 plus years old, and it's deteriorating. Uh, it's, it's undersized, and we need to do something with it. Uh, something needs to happen. We need to enlarge it. It needs truck lanes. Uh, it needs to be eight lanes from here to St. Louis. And it's only going to happen if the people vote it in. Uh, something at, and take advantage of I-70 and that infrastructure to move goods and services. Intermodal is getting larger and larger all the time. And part of that intermodal is, is on the highways. We need to take advantage of that. We also need to build off of I-70, build uh, our infrastructure, our retail, and what have you, and uh, that uh, that I-70 can bring us. We talk about different projects on this on the uh, highway projects, but here's here's what people don't understand: the state legislators, we have no control over what's going on down there. That's done through the Pioneer Trails Regional. Uh, planning commissions. Uh, Tracy Dyer has more control over what <laughs> highway projects are going to be done than the state state legislators or even state senators. So uh, if you have a project you want done, you need to talk to Tracy, uh, Harold Hofflander, and take that project to uh, the Pioneer Trails Planning Regional Planning Commission and they can help get it on the list and that's how you get highways and road projects completed in the state of Missouri. It's not by the legislatures. Thank you. We invite forward L.G. Verdun.